Hello everyone and welcome to a week of Linux news for the 27th of November 2016. Now the story I'm going to start with this week is more of a flagrant abuse of government powers in the United Kingdom because a new bill was passed into law this week. The Investigatory Powers Bill, which forces internet service providers to keep a full list of internet connection records for all their subscribers for a year and make it available to them if the government asks. Now this is not just police that will be allowed to ask for details, it goes a lot further than that. The internet connection records will effectively serve as a full list of every website that people have visited, not collecting which specific pages have been visited or what's done on them, but serving as a full list of every site that someone has visited and when. And taking a look at the agencies which are allowed access to data, yes, there's the obvious ones like you've got the police forces there, uh, Ministry of Defence, police though, Okay, so what are they going to try and find when someone has gone AWOL, or absent without leave? GCHQ, okay, Ministry of Justice, uh, now we're pushing our luck a bit. HM Revenue and Customs, what? Department for Transport, huh? Department for Work and Pensions, okay. National Health Service, why? Food Standards Agency, the fuck? Why are all these agencies allowed access? I mean, it gets worse. Health and safety executive? What, so if you've been claimed that you've got a back injury and the day before that you were looking at uh, what symptoms are of back pain, then you know, is that the reason or something? Why? I don't understand this. I've nothing against police having access to these records. Actually, I'm actually against the whole thing in general. This is just surveillance society. And it's just going too far. <laughs> moving along to Linux news. Debian are tidying up the Linux file system and moving a lot of folders under the USR. What does USR stand for? Unix System Resources? Is that one? I don't know. Do you know what? I've never actually looked into it. So they're moving slash bin, slash sbin, and slash lib under the slash USR folder. So I expect we'll see that change dribble down into Ubuntu as well. So it's not like Debian have just gone off on their own and done this. It's actually been done with other Linux distributions. So, for example, Arch, Fedora, and CentOS, I believe, have done this already. And the plus side of it, really, is that if you're doing separate drives or partitions for each individual folder, it'll be slightly less work here. You're only doing one folder instead of three or four. There's work being carried out on the APT packaging system, it's the APT 1.4 in beta at the moment, is going to be more secure than previous versions. One of the major changes is that it drops the SHA-1 keys. Now I still am trying to use one repository that is on SHA-1 in the Launchpad PPA, it's the old Qt 6a repository, it's not been updated for a long time and I'm getting warnings already. So. At some point next year, I'm going to have to expect that to stop working entirely, which is a bit annoying, really. So there will be some performance gains with APT 1.4, so yeah, something to look forward to when we're installing packages the old-fashioned way, and not using snaps. Well, it's nearly December, and it's coming up towards Christmas, so I found a few sites with gift ideas for, well, in this case, 10 holiday gift ideas for open-source enthusiasts. 3D printer, ooh, 1,250 US dollars, yeah, that's a little bit pricey, isn't it? Raspberry Pi starter kit, yeah, a bit more realistic, I suppose. Swag, keyboard stickers, donations and memberships, secret coder graphics novels, hmm, different. Cubetto programming toy, what? The Cubetto wooden robot helps teach young children the basics of computer programming without the added complexity of screens, keyboard, and any other complex hardware. 225 US dollars, eh? New System76 laptop, with Linux on, of course. Multi-pass password keeper. And finally, the ColorHug 2 display colorometer. Yeah, I think as an open source fan, I'm not sure how much I'd appreciate some of those gifts. An article on OMG Ubuntu meets the new Pinebook, an $89 ARM laptop that runs Ubuntu. A very basic laptop, but that is incredibly cheap, $89. I 
So what do we get for that? So we get a 64-bit quad-core ARM Cortex-A53 at 1.2 GHz, 2 GB of RAM, dual-core Mali 400 MP2 graphics, 16 GB flash drive, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, 1.3 megapixel webcam, with a display resolution of 1280 by 720. Yeah, so it's not exactly particularly high on the display resolution, but look, you can't expect too much. So there's two screen sizes being offered, 11 inch and 14 inch, priced at 89 and 99 dollars respectively. Tell you what, that sounds reasonable spec for the price that you're paying. On the other end of the spectrum, ARS Technica have done a review of the System76 Oryx Pro laptop, I'll tell you what, the specs of this sounded pretty impressive, or maybe I'm just a bit behind technology at the moment, but uh, anyway, it has 32GB of RAM, an NVIDIA GTX 1060 graphics card, 256GB solid state disk, and comes with Ubuntu 16.04. That was just the more basic model that they got there, and uh, how much did this retail for? I think it was about 15, uh, £1,500 or 1864 US dollars. But you can get even higher spec, you can get up to 64 gig of RAM and 9 terabyte of hard drive. That's uh, quite mad really, considering I've only got 16 gig of RAM in my computer here and I'm happily rendering 1080p videos and running multiple operating systems at once. There's only been a couple of Linux distros released this week. We have Fedora 25, Zorin OS 12. I've actually done a review of this already. I've been given a key for the ultimate version, um, but it's not going to be a, a normal review of mine, so it's something to look forward to in December. And there's been a new release of Clonezilla, my favourite full disk backup utility. So that was a look at the week of Linux news. Thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.